Hi there. Welcome to an Average Knitter podcast. My name is Kayla, and it has been such a long time since we could do this together. More than three months? And I think when I first started out, I thought, oh, you know, maybe every month a video, and that stretched into every two months. If you hear sounds, those are my two little girls. They're playing upstairs. Uh, it is a Friday night after school. I live in Wisconsin, United States, and it's 4.30 and it's almost dark outside. I know some of you understand and feel the same struggle. So we're just, we're just rolling with it. This was the best time to record. Things have been so busy lately. And I feel like after watching some other knitting podcasts, many of you expressed the same thoughts as well. We've all just been so busy. So summer ended and uh, school started. My two kids are in school. I teach part-time and I also am lucky enough I feel so thankful to help with the musical at our local high school but that's a lot of evening rehearsals and that just finished up last weekend so I feel like <sighs> my family and I have a little space to breathe again my kids were wonderful they came to lots of rehearsals my husband helped uh, organize uh, create the sound design and worked with the microphones for the program, so it was really a family affair this year. In addition, a couple weeks ago, my sisters and I just ran a half marathon in Disney World. I'm thinking about creating a different video about that because I know that has nothing to do with knitting. I didn't even bring my knitting along um, because I was just so, just for lots of reasons, but we completed the Disney Wine and Dine half marathon, which had been on my bucket list and my sister's bucket lists for a long time and I'm so thrilled and thankful and still a little bit amazed that we did it and I'm so proud of myself and so thankful to my husband for helping to create the space and the time to make this really really big goal and dream happen so that was just a couple weeks ago um, also this summer I performed in a local community theater production so yeah it's just been very very very, very busy. I wanted to tell you today about this finished object. It's the only thing I finished lately, which is why we're making this video to talk about it. I still have half of a sock on the needles. So my last video, I showed you a finished sock. The second sock is halfway done. It'll get done eventually. I found this summer that the easiest and best way to knit was on road trips. We live about four hours away from my parents and my husband's parents, and he enjoys driving and graciously offers to drive for most of our road trips. He puts on some podcasts, the kids are doing their own thing in the back, and I pull out my knitting. So most of this was knit in the car, going back and forth from grandma and grandpa's or going you know, to whatever, whatever we did this summer. But our last trip, it was Labor Day weekend, I think, I was on the, I think I was on the ribbing, the cuff for the sleeves, and I, it, I totally spaced that you need smaller needles to create the ribbing. So here I was, I pulled out the instructions, had my bag, I go, oh. And my sweet, sweet husband says, well, let's, let's just stop. Let's just stop at the store and get whatever needle size you need. He's like, I, I want you to have something to work on. Like, let's stop and get you some needles. And I was like, oh, honey, no, like we can't just stop. He's like, can we go to Walmart? I said, no, like, thank you. I really appreciate that. But we can't just go into Walmart and get, you know, size three double pointed needles or whatever, whatever this was. And we were kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I think Walmart would have been our only choice. And I explained to him, he's very into bikes and cycling, road rides, mountain biking. He could talk all day long about bikes. And I know enough to listen and understand. But I think there's an analogy there between expensive bike parts and then, you know, just whatever will get you by. And so I explained to him, honey, this is like bike parts. Like, we need to go to the local neighborhood bike shop and order the really nice ones. Like we can't just walk into a Walmart and get the needles that I need. Anyways, he's like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, like bike parts. Anyways, it was just funny. Um, so I pulled out the second sock and ended up 
knitting on the second sock quite a bit when I couldn't when I couldn't keep working on this. And then we came home from that particular trip, grabbed the double pointed needle, double pointed needles I had been missing, and who all was right with the world. So this is uh, the No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit. I know it's popular. I know lots of you have maybe already made it. Maybe you're thinking about making it. I have been looking for a cardigan pattern for a while. I just kept browsing and browsing on Ravelry. Couldn't make up my mind. I have a couple of store-bought cardigans that I love and I wear them so frequently. As a teacher, you're in and out of classrooms. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. You don't know what the HVAC is doing. Maybe you're, well, I dance with my students because I'm a music teacher, but maybe you're dancing with your students, whatever. You just don't know. So cardigans are so handy. Um, and my favorites have, you know, a very straight front, straight across the bottom and a more fitted sleeve. I didn't have anything in white or cream. So I was looking for something that would kind of fit that style, that shape that I prefer and that I could make in cream. This summer, one of my local yarn shops, <clears throat> Kaleidoscope Fibers in Cambridge, Wisconsin, they advertised a new to them yarn and it is called, it's going to be backwards, but Fashion Cotton Light and Long Tweed. It's a DK weight. And I saw the advertisement and thought, oh, that really looks like, like maybe what I'm thinking of. So then looked for a DK weight um, sweater pattern, a sweater pattern that used DK weight yarn and saw No Frills Cardigan, which I had been eyeing up for quite a while. So anyways, finally decided... Um, I found someone's project on Ravelry and they had made the No Frills cardigan much shorter, which if you're familiar with the pattern, it's very, very long and I did not want to make it that long. Um, and so I, I looked again and I couldn't find that particular person's project, but I kind of based my grams or my yards needed based off of what this person had used. I think I bought six skeins of this. I think I bought six skeins, which would be 300 grams. Or let's do some quick math. 1100 meters. I think. I think. Let's see here. Materials. That would have been about half. I'm not sure that's right. Anyways, maybe I got seven skeins. Um, but got this. It is 47% cotton, 43% acrylic, and 10% a couple of other little things that make up, make up the little tweed bits. This was advertised as almost more of a summery type yarn, which I started the cardigan in the summer and I thought, oh, that'll be great. But it's DK weight. So I don't know that I would wear it in the summer. I've gotten a lot of wear out of it this fall. It seems very, very autumn-like to me. I'm not sure I would wear it as much in the summer just because it is thicker. I think I would make something fingering weight for the summer, but I really don't want to make something fingering weight in my size right now. So we'll see. We'll see. But I love it. So you can see all these little tweety bits, and it's actually super similar to a sweater that I have that I bought at Ann Taylor Loft last year or two years ago. It's very, very similar, which I wonder if that's why I was drawn to it. And I just didn't realize because it was already like a sweater that I super duper love. But I love all of the, all of the Tweety bits. They're bright red and blue and green. The lighting, I have my dining room light on right now. So it's not, not the most accurate, but you get the idea. Like there's a bright, there's a bright red bright red piece. This was really enjoyable to make. I love mindless stock in it. Like I love just going. I struggled with the beginning of the pattern. I found, okay, first it's my fault because I just don't, what I should do is slowly read through a pattern, right? And, and take notes and, you know, maybe watch some videos and just take my time. And I don't, I never do. I skim through it and then I hurry up and swatch and I'm like, oh, yep, gauge is good. And I start. And then after a couple paragraphs, I'm going, what? This doesn't make any sense. 
And it probably would have made sense if I had just taken my time. Anyways, there were a few spots in this pattern where I felt that way, like, oh, this just doesn't make sense. So when you do this part, you create this first from the back and you go one way and then you do it the other way. And I thought I had read the instructions and then I started and it didn't make sense. And so I started over and it wasn't working. And I watched a couple of tutorials on YouTube and it was after trying several times and watching a couple of tutorials that it finally made sense. So I would encourage you to do the same. If you're struggling, if you're like me and you just read too fast and it's not making sense, just look up some tutorials. I found that really helpful and finally it made, finally it made, it made sense. It was so enjoyable to do something that was top down. My last project, if you remember, was a striped sweater from the bottom up and I'm really proud of it, but I found the construction, especially right around here, very challenging. So doing something from the top down and being able to try it on was so fun. I think my family thought I was nuts trying to like get my arms into something and then like trying it on and it only came down to here and they're like, do you think you're done? What's going on? No, it was just so fun. So fun to try on. I made, I think I knit size medium and I got gauge with the needles suggested. But my measurements, I think my measurements put me at a size large. So following what the pattern says for recommended ease, bust measurements, da 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 following all of that, the recommendation was that I make a large. But I know that when I buy store-bought cardigans, I usually buy a size down because I don't expect or want them to close in front. I want them just to hang straight down. So I thought maybe the same will be true of this cardigan. So I think I sized down and made a medium and it went really well. Like I would not want this any bigger. I knit the sleeves as long as I wanted to. So you can see, well, okay. This one I accidentally switched to a smaller needle size. So don't want to look at that part, but over here, you can see I could fold the cuff back like that. And it would be almost a three quarter length, which I because then I can see my watch, bracelets if I'm doing anything at school. Um, so I really like, so yeah, right here, I think this was the second sleeve and for some reason I switched to the smaller needles too soon and I realized it wasn't time to do ribbing but I had already knit half an inch in the smaller needles and I just left it because I wanted to finish. So I just left it and it's fine, no one can tell. You're not watching, you're not walking around the grocery store going, hmm, Kayla, why does your sleeve look like that? So I made it, let's see if we can, see if I can show you. I made it, I'm gonna go up on tippy toes. Yeah, you can see this long. So like almost to the bottom of my hips, maybe the, maybe the middle of my hips. That's a really comfortable length for me. And I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I tried to make the ribbing on the bottom the same length as the ribbing at the sleeves. I thought I was going to have to play yarn chicken and I really didn't want to go back and buy another skein, but I won. I won the game of yarn chicken and had like a sizable little ball of yarn left, which I'm sure my daughter will want to turn into something, which she usually does with the little balls of yarn. And that's, that's great. She makes all sorts of things for her Barbies, but I just, I love this. It's so comfortable. You just throw it on. Um, I thought the sleeves went really well and that they look really nice. So it's not as fitted, you can tell, it's not as fitted as maybe some of my other sweaters. And I actually, I decreased faster than it suggested. So on one of those road trips, we were in the car and my husband was driving and I was knitting. I had gotten like this far on a sleeve and I tried it on and went, like there's so much extra fabric here. And I knitted all the way down to where the ribbing would start. And I went, oh, this just isn't, this isn't me. So I ripped the sleeve out all the way back to here and decreased twice as fast. And I'm super happy with it. I feel like it still is the same shape 
as what's advertised in the pattern. It's still very comfy and roomy, but it's, it's me. It's more me. And that was an easy adjustment to make. Length, that's an easy thing to change. I did not add any pockets. I wasn't interested in pockets. I have pockets in my pants. I have pockets in my dresses. Wasn't interested in pockets, which made it a little bit faster too. So I love it. I love it. I would love to knit it again with a different yarn and pay attention to the instructions and go slower. All of that, all of that good stuff. But I, I really, really love it. I'm so glad I made it. I'm getting a ton of wear out of it. I'm interested to see how this yarn holds up. There's a little bit of, it's not even pilling yet, but you can just see like on the underarms, like, oh yeah, she's been wearing her sweater. That's okay, that's what they're for, right? That's what they're for. Next on my needles, besides the half finished second sock, is another So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry, specifically the So Faded pint sized. I started it for my daughter. So one of my first videos I told you about and showed you the So Faded pint sized that I made for my girls. And I love, 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 love the fade technique. Um, and several months ago, one of the trips to the yarn shop, my oldest picked out some new colors. And I think we already had a couple in our, in our stash for her next fade sweater because she's outgrown the other one. She's growing. So we got something started. As soon as I finished this, I got started on it right away. And it's so fun because I've made this sweater. This is my third one now. The pattern is coming so easily and I can take it with me wherever I go. It's small enough that it fits in my purse right now. And I don't even need the pattern because I'm just going. Um, for my, she's nine. I had to stop and think. For my nine-year-old, I'm making the size 12. The 10, the measurements are just right for the size 10 to fit her comfortably and nicely. But I don't want her to grow out of it too soon. And especially winter here in Wisconsin, you can wear a sweater on top of a long sleeve shirt and that's not too much at all. So I'm thinking if I make it in a size 12, that'll give her a couple years in the sweater. So this is the first yarn. It's a little bit more pinkish and orangish in person. Some really pretty spots, like right, yeah, right, right there, right there. This is from a shop called Knit the Holidays. I found it at Kaleidoscope Fibers, but they also have an Etsy shop. Right there, etsy.com slash shop slash knit the holidays. This is an alpaca sock yarn. It's 70% superwash alpaca, which I have never used before, and 30% nylon. It's four ply, which I feel like is going to be really good for a sweater for an active child. And this is in the color Coastal Sunrise. So it's a light pink, a little bit peachy. There's a few tiny pops of, you can't see it in this, in this camera, but bubblegum pink. So that's going to be super lovely. And this is how far I am. Not very far at all. Almost ready to um, join it together to work in the round. But it's so enjoyable just to sit and go and have it memorized and know, know what's happening. So that's the start. Um, we have some leftovers from, see, I'm looking at it and it looks tan in the camera, but it's definitely more of a peachy brown with some little black speckles in person. So we have some odds and ends from various projects that would blend in nicely here. This is a little Barbara deserved better. Talked about that one in a previous video. This one, this one is from an old uh, so faded pint sized sweater for one of my kids. This is our next color though. It is, ooh, it's showing up almost, almost just right. It's a lovely light pink with these like deep raspberry splotches. There's some deep navy splotches. It's so lovely. Oh, my daughter was so excited about this. This is also from Knit the Holidays. It's Kaleidoscope Sunset. And it's 70% superwash merino and 30% nylon. Yeah. It's 
going to be super cool. Super, super cool. I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be awesome. So we have that fading into that, maybe with some of these other little pieces. And then this is what it looks like in real life. Like this is showing up. This is showing up just right. This is also from Knit the Holidays. Uh, this is very soft. Like this one, I mean, it's mostly super wash wool. So it's not very soft, but it's fine. You know, like it's fine. It's totally fine. <gasps> this one is so soft. This is an alpaca sock. This is this, is this the same as this one? It feels softer than this one. Well, anyways, same 70% superwash alpaca, 30% nylon, pink lady. So, so excited. There's a few darker spots as well. I think we're going to need another skein. To be honest with you, I don't think this will be enough. I think we'll need another skein, especially since I started a size 12. But I'll come back in a couple months and show you the finished product and show you what we ended up actually fading into and if we added another color. And I'm so excited. Yeah. Winter in Wisconsin is the perfect time to knit. Like I just feel this need to be cozy and in a cozy home. And we've set up little twinkling lights around our house and we've been making things like apple crisp and hot tea and it's just the perfect the perfect thing i've even snuck it into my work bag my knitting into my work bag a couple times and if i had a few minutes here or there which you never do as a teacher but once in a while i find a minute to to knit a row yeah yeah thank you for spending time with me it was so special sharing my latest finished project with you. Um, I'm so excited about this new So Faded. Yeah, and it's just delightful watching everyone else's um, blogs and vlogs and videos and podcasts and always thinking about and dreaming up new ideas. I love seeing what other people are making. I don't think I'm knitting anything for gifts this Christmas. I did that one Christmas and it was a ton of fun, especially because they were mostly small projects, so they come together quickly. I'm doing that this Christmas. We'll see. We'll see. All right. It's time for me to go. Thank you for spending time together. I hope that you are well. I hope you have something exciting on your needles. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Bye.